So as promised, here is the edited video of the clay leaf making workshop I recorded last weekend. So if you were unable to make it at that time, you can now use this video, um, order your clay, plasticine, femo, etc. online, hopefully get it delivered, and then do this workshop in your own time at your leisure with your family and children. So I do hope you enjoy. Let me know what you make. I'd love to see pictures. And if you've enjoyed it, then do also like my page on Facebook, Sonia Ceramic Art. Hi everyone. So I hope you've managed to get out of bed this morning and join me and Macy. This is my daughter Macy. And we're going to uh, deliver a leaf, clay leaf making workshop. So um, this is the first time we've done something live like this, so bear with us, we might have a few giggles and make a few mistakes, but hopefully the aim of this workshop is for you to have fun and produce something you're proud of using real leaves that you hopefully foraged from your garden or the park yesterday or the day before, and um, produce maybe a little piece of jewellery, a bit like what I'm wearing here, um, a leaf coaster. So Macy, if you want to pick up one of the leaf coasters in the far corner, those there. Those are made from blackberry leaves, so um, easily found in hedgerows. Um, and also some trinket dishes. You might want to make a little trinket dish um, to put rings and bits and pieces on your dressing table. Um, that's a larger leaf coaster there. And Macy, if you hold up that, that's actually, um, this one here is actually a sushi dish that I made. And if you turn it over, Macy, show that there's a leaf on the base. Um, so two leaves used to make that one. But the reason I wanted to show that one is that I thought for some of you little ones and children, you might like to make a, a similar shape, but for a, a door plaque to put your name in the middle. So in the shape of a leaf, um, to go on your bedroom door and to have your name on it. So that's another little idea. Or you could literally have a leaf on a wall just as a nice decoration with a little motto or a saying on it. So those are the kind of things we're going to do. And we're also going to use some bigger leaves. So we're going to start small and get bigger. Um, so those are the kind of uh, things that I make as well as part of my, my, my business on your ceramic art, which you can have a look at more. Your parents can show you on um, Facebook. So we've got all our materials here. Hopefully you saw the list um, that I sent out. Macy's going to be in charge of Play-Doh for um, some of you who are younger. And we're, I'm going to use proper clay. This is potter's clay, which you can put in a kiln, which is like a really hot oven. And it goes hard, which is um, you know, how these have become hard. You can see that they're ceramic, like the plates you eat off of at dinner time. Um, but obviously you may not have proper clay, so that's why Macy's going to show you the Play-Doh and we're also going to talk about using plasticine and Fimo and things like that. So the other thing you of course need is the leaves and we've got a little selection here. And I did a little Facebook Live yesterday explaining that the best leaves, you might want to check now on the collection you've got, are the ones with a really nice vein structure on the back because some leaves are, I mean, that one's not too bad, but it's a bit softer, as you can see. You really want ones which have got a really good leaf structure on them, because when you press that into the clay or the Fimo, it, it just leaves a really good impression. So watch out for that when you're deciding which ones to use this morning. So um, what should we do now? I'm, I've gone through the leaves, preparing the clay. So Macy, you may want to start molding together your Fimo. Can you remember when you used to use it when you were younger? Does it need to be warmed up in your hands? I don't know. Have a go. <laughs> Get some out and make a greeny colour. So thank you to Emily Jordan at this stage. So Emily is my next door neighbour and she is a franchisee of Little City Bristol. And that is a wonderful new company who has developed a new kind of play, role play style for toddlers and preschoolers in Bristol. And um, I suddenly thought, oh, I haven't got any Play-Doh. So Emily lent me this Play-Doh uh, yesterday, which is really kind of her. So do have a look at Little City Bristol on Facebook, because um, if you want any parties or things to do with your little ones, it's a really, really great idea for theatrical role play. So Macy's going to start getting her Play-Doh ready. And um, it's going to bring some memories back for Macy when we used to go to uh, toddler groups and she used to love Play-Doh when she was younger. So this is the potter's clay. This is basically like mud that you find in the garden. Um, 
I'm needing it. A bit like you might see your mum or dad kneading um, bread, dough in the kitchen if they're making bread. And the reason I'm doing this is to get the air, and it makes a nice kind of snail spiral, is to get the air out of the clay. Because with potter's clay, if you're going to put it in the kiln, the really hot oven, and if there's air trapped inside, it will crack and explode. So you don't probably need to do this bit unless you're using proper clay. If you are, give it a good knead, or you can also whack it on the table like this. Um, and I try and whack it into like a cube shape, so it's a bit long at the moment. It depends what shape you're making to roll it out, but um, I kind of whack it like this, and this also helps to get the air out of the clay as well. Um, <clears throat> and hopefully what you're looking to get is, if I just get my wire, when you wire it in half, you hopefully don't have any air bubbles inside, which we don't. So that's what you're trying to achieve to make sure there's no air inside. So I'm just going to re-wedge that. <clears throat> and, and then we're going to roll this out. So Macy, you explain, you've got two little um, baby rolling pins next to you. If you want to show which you think is better. Now that white one is for fondant icing when you're baking. And I've got a feeling that one is better for Play-Doh. The, the wooden one might stick a bit, so um, for you children watching, you might want to just ask your mums or your dads um, if they've got any different rolling pins, just to try out which one's better. I also explained on the post yesterday that, worst case, if you don't have a rolling pin, just go and get a, a can of baked beans out of the cupboard, and then you can use that to roll your Play-Doh. So, I've needed that enough. I'm going to make... First of all, we're going to start off by making a little leaf that then you could make into a piece of jewellery. Now, obviously, with Play-Doh, it would stay soft, so that wouldn't really make jewellery. But after experimenting this morning with Play-Doh, you could order some Fimo online, and then you could redo this workshop and do it again with leaves and put it in the oven to make it hard, and then that could make jewellery. Um, and then you could actually paint the Fimo with the colours you want. Put it, you've got to put a little hole in the top, obviously, for threading the chain through. But that's how you could, if you haven't got clay, you could order some Fimo and you could make that into some nice jewellery. So Macy's rolling hers out. I'm rolling my clay out. Now with rolling, it's really important to roll a bit and then flip it over because one, it's going to stick to the wooden surface. And this is why I suggested you had a wooden surface to roll out on, because if you're going to roll onto newspaper or plastic, it's going to stick. So you do need a wooden surface um, for the clay, and Fimo as well is, is better on either like a little bit of plastic like this or wooden table. And think about the thickness that you want. So Macy's gone to a nice thickness for jewellery, because she's, I think, thinking, well, that, that would be delicate for jewellery. And then Macy, if you want to choose a leaf that you like the shape of for a pendant, and then use your rolling pin to press that into the Fimo. So I've got a larger piece of clay that I can show you for jewellery and a leaf coaster in a minute to put your mug of chocolate or nice drink on. Or you could make one for mum or dad to put their glass of wine on. <laughs> so, mine's a little bit thicker, but that's okay. So Macy's going to do a really nice one there. I'm going to do one at the same time. Which leaf shall I use? Now, I'm going to use, for this jewellery, I think I'm going to use, um, actually, I might use this one. I don't know what this is, but I found this in the garden. For the mums and dads out there who know their flowers, you might know, and plants, you might know what leaf that is, but I, I can't remember. So I'm going to put that one on. I'm going to press it in with the rolling pin. And I go over a few times, and I've, it's kind of like a medium pressure, so that you can't see any of the edges lifting off. And then we're going to use a little knife or a pin or some fine tool. Now with knives, obviously, for the younger children watching, you want to make sure your mum and dad is with you and just not to use a really sharp knife. So you can just use a knife that you eat with, cutlery knife, and that should be enough just to lift it off. Okay, so just make sure 
but you've got an adult with you. So I'm just going to um, tease up the end. And I don't know if you, I might try and lift this so you can see it a bit better. And I'm going to pull, and this is the really therapeutic nice bit because lots of children watch my videos when I do art shows and they get mesmerised because it's really nice peeling that off. So look, that's really pretty. It's quite a big pendant, that's the only thing with that one. But, and, and Macy's done hers. So Macy, do you want to do one on that one and then actually show people you, when you peel it off? Choose a different neat leaf. That's it. Maybe do it near the end and then you've got space to do another one in a minute. So yeah, so that's good. So Macy's, that's come out really well. And then you can use your nails like Macy's done there. Brilliant. So Macy, if you want to now cut around your leaf shape. Now what I recommend with cutting around is a lot of people cut around and try and get the precise shape of the leaf. Now I don't with my ceramics. I find it's nice to leave a little border and because it's neater and then the finish looks more professional. So I would suggest that you just cut around leaving a little border. You can still do a wobbly line to suggest the shape because this leaf has got a really nice jagged shape. But if you think about it, that's going to be a lot of work going in and out all the way around. So I would suggest that Macy just does a kind of a, an even line. But Macy, you see what you think. You could do one side jagged and one side smooth to show people the difference, maybe. Or a little, little wavy line like that, yeah. So I'm going to have a little go. Now my, mine's thicker, so to be perfectly honest, this wouldn't work as a pendant. One, the leaf is a little bit too big and I've done it too thick. But as you can see, also what I do with edges, can you see the point? Um, the, the outer point where I know I've got this frond, if I was to do it in one go, it wouldn't be very neat and it would have a rounded edge. So what I do is I start at the inside points, I come up and then I cross over because when we peel it off in a moment, that will give you a cleaner end point than if I was trying to um, do the cut in one full go all the way round. So I've learnt from doing lots of leaf things that this is often the best way. So I'm, this is nice now when you peel this off. So I'm just going to peel these bits off and you'll see that you're left with quite a neat. I take this big bit off. You're left, obviously this is really chunky because I'm about to do coasters to show you, but imagine if this was a thinner piece that, that you've, you've got these really nice points that are crisp. So that, that's, um, that's quite a pretty leaf, isn't it? If it was a bit smaller, that would work really well as a pendant, or certainly if it was thinner. So Macy, you might, you might want to try that. Um, I don't know if you've got enough space there. You might be able to maybe mush together that yellow one and redo a flat bit of, and then try that one as a, a thinner, but get it thin like that, because I think that's really pretty for a pendant. Right then, what we're going to do now, I've got enough space on this piece here to do a leaf coaster. So this is what we're going to try and make here. These are my coasters and I back them with felt. So really lovely um, for your mug of coffee or tea. So we're going to make one of these. I've got enough. Now this is ideal for a coaster thickness, I think. So that, that can stay as it is and we've already lifted it off so it's not sticking to the table. So I'm going to choose a leaf. Now, some of the leaves in the garden this morning are quite suitable for a kind of a, you want a roundish shape because at the end of the day, a coaster is going to be where you're going to put a mug of coffee or something on there. So you need it to be roundish. So some leaves that are long and thin don't work as well. Um, that one, I'm not convinced the veins are going to be um, kind of prominent enough. So I'm not going to use that one. Um, actually, what I do, because I use leaves all the time, is I collect leaves and I dry them. So this is a type of sycamore leaf from the autumn, which I've dried. They don't last forever because the veins do get a bit flattened after using them lots of times. But I'm going to use this one because it's a nice shape to show you. So this is a dried leaf. So I always use the side which has got the, the veins. So if you feel your leaves, you'll notice one side is smooth and one side is more kind of textured, so use the textured side and lay that down 
on the clay. Now I also make sure when I lie it down I've got enough edge around because I'm going to leave a border again. And what I'm doing is I'm pressing in quite hard, a bit harder when it's a dried leaf, a few times like that. And then I get my knife and again I'm going to cut it like I did before. I'm crossing over so that these edges are really sharp and nice. And I'm kind of, with this one, I am going to go with the shape of the neat, the neat leaf to a certain degree, but I'm going to leave enough border so that I know if somebody puts a mug of coffee down, they're going to have enough space in the middle for the base of the mug or the wine glass to fit. So can you see I've kind of done a crisscross? And then what I do is I kind of lift off the clay tends to come, come off in sections, which is quite help, helpful. And then I lift off, and I lift off this big bit. Take that off, we can do another coaster over there. And then you will get some of the edges kind of um, coming up. This is where you need to be really careful. And what I suggest you do is you lift up, if you've got a pointed leaf like this, lift up the edges first and then grab and pull in one direction. So that is your coaster. I'm going to peel it off in a second. So that's worked out quite well, that one. I'm going to now peel the leaf off. I'm going to get a little edge. Now when they're dry and also actually fresh leaves, they have a tendency to tear. So again, do this really gradually. Can you see as I'm doing this? So I'll move, the, I'll move the leaf a bit closer to the camera so you can see better. Can you see that as I'm pulling this one off, if I was to pull really hard there, it's going to rip at this point here. So what I do is I think, OK, I'm not going to pull from there. I'm going to lift this one as well. So then I've got two points from which I can pull. And you see that one nearly went there. So it's important to think about that if you want to save your leaves and use them for another time. But that's left a really nice um, impression there, if you can see. So with real potter's clay, this is really soft at the moment, which is what, how you want it to make and roll out. But what I'm going to do is leave that now to harden slightly, and in a few hours' time, I would then go over with a wet brush I'll show you now, but it's, it's obviously going to be a bit squidgy. So imagine this is a bit harder. It's called leather hard clay because it literally feels kind of leather hard. And then I would go over with a little paintbrush, um, neatening up the edges and the points because you don't want these too spiky. You'd want to round them off a little bit for a coaster. So that is basically the finishing off. And that's, you know, with the pieces of work that I sell, obviously I'm really keen to have a really well finished um, leaf coaster. So that's an important part of it for me, the finishing off. Um, and then it would go and it would dry totally, take about a week to dry, and then it would go in the kiln and, and um, be hardened, and then I'd put glazes on them. So that is literally the first making stage of a leaf coaster there. And then obviously the last point is putting the felt in the bottom and you can order the felt on Amazon online quite easily and it's sticky backed felt which makes it easy. So that's a leaf coaster there. I'm going to pop that one for now. It's a bit soggy now because I put the... I'm just going to pop that over there so you can see that. So that is a leaf coaster made there. Lovely. And Macy's done a really pretty one there. <laughs> So that's really nice. If you want to, while I'm preparing the next stage, Macy, if you want to show with the pin tool how you would make a little hole in that for if it was going to be a piece of jewellery. And if you want, you might, there's some water in that jar. I don't know if you need it with the Play-Doh. No, it looks okay, doesn't it? Yeah, and then turn it over and show how if it comes through the other side a bit kind of, you need it to go through both sides, obviously, if it is going to be a pendant of some sort. So we've shown you a little bit of jewellery with leaves, we've shown you a coaster. What we're going to do now is we're going to make a trinket dish, and this is bigger. So actually, I'm going to lump this clay together, I'm going to re-wedge it, and we're going to use this lovely fatsia leaf. Um, and I think I might need a bit more clay, so I'm just going to wire some of this off. And I'm 
I'm going to wedge this together. So these, um, these leaves uh, grow in my garden, I'm really lucky, and they start off obviously really tiny as little leaf buds, and then they get huge, um, you know, bigger than a chopping board size. They get really, really big, so they're perfect for making lots of different things, and um, they're also quite firm, the leaves. They don't tear very easily, and they've got a lovely leaf structure on the back, the vein structure, so they really do lend themselves um, well to making proper ceramics with them. So that's a bit, bit of kneading done there. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to get it into a bit more of a round shape because I'm looking at this leaf and I'm thinking, well, it's, it's more round than it is long. So I'm just tapping it into shape. And then I'm just going to whack it with my hand to get it into a bit more of a round shape. So Macy, if you want to have a go at... Um, oh yeah, you've done a nice coaster shape there. Are you finding, is there anything useful you can say to the children watching who might be using Play-Doh, kind of what's difficult about it? Or no, it's quite easy. It's quite easy, so it's not... Um, you don't need water with it or anything? No. So, so that's good. And obviously, Macy, talk a little bit as well, which would be really helpful because I haven't used Fimo that much, but you have, haven't you? Can you remember what are the difficult things with Fimo? Because I think there's something you need to do when it first comes out the packet, isn't it? I can't remember, but uh, it gets dry easily. It gets dry, so you have to keep it wrapped up in like um, cling film or something, don't you? Yeah. But I, I re vaguely remember you warming it up with your hands quite a bit to get it more um, soft and easy to roll out, is that right? Yeah, I think so. So it's probably a good idea if you're using Fimo to really, a bit like with blue tack, you know, you see people rolling it in their hands and their fingers. So I think if you warm it up, the Fimo, really quite well, you'll find that then when you roll it out with a rolling pin, it'll be much easier to work with. Um, and the Fimo, you can also blend colours together, so you could get different greens and browns and maybe marble them together and um, roll it out flat, like Macy's done with the Play-Doh, and then press the leaves in. And then, how long do you, can you remember how long do you put Fimo in the oven for? I know it says on the instructions on the back, doesn't it? Uh, something like that isn't it yeah I can't remember the temperature but it's the instructions are normally on the back and then it comes out really hard doesn't it so you can you can then wear it as jewelry but you could also paint it with acrylic paint um, something that I quite often say to some of my pottery students that if they make something with me and I fire it for them in the kiln so it goes hard a bit like you'd fire Fimo um, in, the, in the oven, um, but they, they, don't, they don't have a kiln or they don't want to come back for a glazing session, then what you can do is use acrylic paint because it's got a bit of plasticity to it and it's water resistant when it dries, acrylic paint. You can use that to paint ceramics um, or Fimo. And then if you want it really shiny afterwards, you can paint over the top with varnish and that gives it a really nice finish. And you can even get kind of glittery varnish and things. So you can be quite creative with that. You know, and you don't have to stick to obviously leaf colours. If you don't want to be authentic, you could have a pink leaf <laughs> or a blue leaf. So that's something that um, if you haven't already got Fimo, you could, you could maybe get some order some online. And um, I'll be posting this um, video again on Facebook and I'll probably do an edit as well with some helpful tips so you'll be able to access it again when you've ordered the materials that you need and you know think up a little project it can be something more complicated than this This is a really simple technique um, but you could even make a little coil pot with clay or Fimo and then you could stick leaves on the outside 
So this fascia leaf, you can see I've, I've got the smooth surface facing up and the veins are facing down into the clay and I'm now going to roll on top. I can be quite kind of robust with the rolling pin with the fatsy leaves because they're fantastic. They just stay in really good shape. So I'll go over a few times. And then I also kind of uh, go over in a different direction as well just to make sure all the veins are in there. So that's that. What I'm going to do first before... So the other thing to say, actually, I forgot last time, is I always leave the leaf on while I cut around the shape because it helps to keep the kind of um, the leaf pattern, if you like. It gives it more um, integrity. It doesn't, the edges don't then go all floppy. Um, so I just find from experience it's better to do that. So I'm going to cut a border like I did before. So this is for a trinket dish. So as you can see, I'm leaving a border as I go around. I'm curling it up. So what I'm also doing is I'm looking at the leaf because with my work I like to reflect nature. So these leaves have a really lovely um, curve on the inside. So I'm reflecting that in the border. Um, it's a little bit more tricky. You have to be quite good with a kind of a bit of a more pointed knife. So again, be careful using whatever knife you have and maybe a mum or dad brother or sister can help you do the more tricky bits of the cutting. But after a while you get used to it. So what I'm going to do now is peel that off. And what's quite handy, as I peel off, could you see that bit, that little frond poked up, which is quite helpful because that's going to help me pick it up in a minute. Um, and again, you need to think about the, uh, the thickness that you wanted for this dish. For me, this is probably a bit too thick. I would have done it a little bit thinner. Depends whether you want it to feel dainty or kind of, and these are a little bit too pointy. They're gonna be, um, they're gonna potentially kind of get damaged, um, I think. So I'm just gonna cut those off a little bit. Luckily this one's sticking up, so that makes it a lot easier for me to pick this up and peel it off. And then peel it off like that. Now what I'm going to do now is show you a little trick for if you want to curve things. So Macy, when she was younger, um, <clears throat> had quite a lot of um, the kind of stuffing material that you get in hobby craft for... What did you used to use it for? I can't remember. Was it making fluffy animals? And the, it's, the, it's the kits, isn't it? When you make a little fluffy animal and you stuff it inside. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we had loads left over. So if you've got something really soft, like fabric, pop it in a plastic bag. Not so it's like really tight, it's got a bit of room. And then basically, you kind of make a little nest in the middle with your hand, ready. Pop that in, nestle it down. And what I do is I do press, so I, I, then I'm starting to think about, well, at which part of the leaf do I want the deepest point to be? And I kind of press down, keep pressing down, and then I kind of curve up, if I want them more curved, the little fronds, I curve them up a bit more. Obviously, if your um, clay is wetter than this, or your plasticine, you'll need to support. Sometimes I fold up bits of kitchen roll or cotton wool and I just support under the fronds. And then I'd put that in the garden in the sun and let it dry. And then I would actually leave the leaf in there because it gives it more, um, what's the word? Um, it's kind of more robust with the leaf in there. It's not gonna flop as much. But for today, I'll take the leaf off and show you. So um, what I might do is just take it should I take it out? I don't know if we can come in closer on top and then you'll be able to see me taking it off, hopefully. Because it, now it's curved, it's a bit more difficult to see, isn't it? But I'm just going to get the edge of that little frond like we did before. And then start to peel. And luckily these leaves are quite tough. So yeah, they're coming off. Yay, there. So... <clears throat> that is a Fatsia japonica leaf trinket dish. 
And that, <coughs> excuse me, is going to come out like that. Obviously it's a bigger version and I've decorated this with proper ceramic glaze and it's gone in the kiln and it's got platinum around the edge. But that is made using a real leaf just like this one. And um, you can paint them different colours with your acrylic paints if you're using Fimo or Plasticine. Um, so yeah, have some fun with that. And then you can use that as a little trinket dish to go on a dressing table. Or you can even use them for um, things, just odds and ends really. Little toys, little bits and pieces. Um, we, when they're ceramic ones, you can also use them as condiment dishes to put olives in at a dinner party or a um, little candle tea light as well. So, so yeah, that's, it's quite fun. So I'm going to leave that one. Actually, it's come out quite well, so I might use that one later on. Pop it out to dry. I'm going to leave that up there. <clears throat> so we've done a few little bits of jewellery. Macy's made loads there, haven't you? Yeah. And some of the, it, can you see, maybe you want to hold up to the camera, Macy, the difference. So that is a dogwood leaf. Um, that is a hydrangea leaf. And just hold up the different vein structures because you can see there's really pretty patterns in different leaves, depending on which ones you use. So we've done little bits of jewellery to show you how it can, and that's, if you, if you glaze them, this is actually porcelain, this leaf. But if you glaze them in a kiln, or if you use Fimo and put them in an oven, you know, they can make really nice pieces of jewellery. So, and you can go to um, Creativity on Warrell Road in Bristol, which is a lovely bead shop, and you can buy the chains and the little loops to make up the jewellery. Or you can order it online at the moment, which is, which is probably obviously easier, and get them posted to you. So we've done a bit of jewellery, we've done leaf coaster, flat, we've done a trinket dish, curved, and the last thing I'm going to show you, just because it's a bit more dramatic, is a really big piece. So I'm going to get um, my clay up together again. Macy, do you want to do this? Do you want to do a big one? <laughs> do you want to do a bit of rolling out? I think all the children would like to see you doing it, probably. You can help me. Right, I don't know how much, what shape leaf are we going to do? Now, I'll show you actually this one. Well, I've got a couple here. So that's a large Fapsia leaf, so like the trinket one that we did. But I won't use that one because you've seen, you've seen how I did the trinket dish. Um, this one is a Loquat leaf from Bristol Botanical Gardens that they let me have because I, I do a lot of work with them, which is kind of them to let me have their special leaves. And this obviously would make a wonderful door plaque. So I think maybe we use this one because I'll show you what you can do to make a door plaque for your bedroom or the bathroom or dad's office. Um, so I think we're going to need probably that piece of clay there. Um, because this piece is fresh out of the bag, it's probably already um, been kneaded actually. So I'm only going to do a little bit. And then I'm going to maybe ask Macy to come round and have a go at rolling it out. Do you want to have a go at rolling out? Come round. Right, just be careful coming round with the lean. Don't trip on the lean. <laughs> I'll get it ready for you. So if you pick up one of the rolling pins, let's move the coaster out of the way. And I'm just getting it, and actually for this one we need a long shape, don't we? So I'm going to throw the clay down into a, a longer shape to start with, because that's going to help the process along. Clay is very clever, it's very adaptable. As you can see, just by me throwing it in a certain way, it's forming into a sausage shape. It's amazing stuff, Clay. When you think about it, it's really just like mud out the garden, but by putting it under a lot of heat and pressure in a kiln. And I find my pieces up to 1,260 degrees, 1,260. And if you think when your mum or dad bakes in the oven, that's about 180, 180. So I go kind of a lot, lot higher than that to 1,800. Um, and then it goes hard. So it's really, really clever stuff. Now, if you do want to get any real potter's clay, I think Hobbycraft online sells some, but be careful because there's also something called air drying clay. Now, that's really good fun to have a go with, so if you take over, you might want to roll that way and get it a bit wider. 
Um, so yeah, the Hobbycraft cell clay, clay, air drying clay looks exactly the same, but it's got this kind of furry stuff inside it. You can't put it in a kiln. Um, so it, you can air dry it and it goes a lot harder than, than uh, say, plasticine, um, but you can't fire it in the oven or in a kiln. Um, and a lot of schools use it. So if you, um, if I twist around this way for you, and then you can flip over. So we're trying to get here a similar size piece of clay. So if I flip it over. Also what you can do with clay is just by literally throwing it, it stretches. Which is also quite a good way. Can you see how that's got a bit longer? Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's quite a good way. So now what you want to do, I'm going to give you these slats, these are wooden slats for eight millimetres um, and actually if we put it the other way, like that, and then if you roll, you can press as hard as you want them because you're not going to go any lower than the slats, if you roll up that way. So yeah, back to air drying clay. So it's great to get air drying clay just to practice what, what clay feels like, but you can't put it in a kiln and make proper ceramics out of it. So if you want to buy clay online, you need to get potter's clay. I think Hobbycraft sell it, but if they don't, Bath Potters definitely sell it. Now, whether or not they're doing orders at the moment, I'm not totally sure, but certainly worth looking at. So well done, that's good. So again, we're flipping, Macy's helping me, and we're flipping over the clay every now and then because when we use Potter's clay, the um, clay filaments and um, fibres, if you do it one more time, they need to get aligned and if you only roll on one side of the clay it has a memory and then it will curl up in, when it dries and it might not be flat in the kiln if you want a flat piece so that's why we flip over brilliant okay so that is quite a good shape and size for the lockwat leaf and you've done a good job of that see it's the exactly the eight millimeters and i'll just stick my finger in there which is very good there we go and then Macy's going to place that on, and which side are you going to use? This one? No, you weren't listening, are you? <laughs> so, and, so yeah, you want to put that down. Now he's a bit curled, so I'm going to hold it down for you on both ends, and just do it gently. <laughs> because the poor leaf has been dried, so he's a bit crispy. And right to the end, you don't want to think that's it, and, and kind of an even. And then what I would do is turn them, turn them and do it that way. And do it gently, poor leaf. <laughs> That's it, so I'm just making sure all the air bubbles are out. Now, were you listening? What do we do before we take the leaf off? Cut it. Yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> so you cut it then, and you're gonna leave a border? And you decide how you're gonna do the border. Lovely. Look at that skill with the knife. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Now, what I would say, on being a pernickety teacher here, is that your end there has got a bit of an, a bit of a nail mark, and it's a bit scraggy. So I would recut that. You might even want to move your leaf. Well, let's pick him up and give. Oh, actually, no, we won't pick him up. He's going to come. I would just, I would just make that a little bit of a nicer um, edge. <laughs> oh. <laughs> See, children, this is how you need to listen and you need to be patient with things and not rush. So, yes, that's better, isn't it? So, taking your time like that and maybe curving it in. And if you and go with the shape, because that's sticking out a bit more. The leaf goes in. So if you're going to mirror the shape, you might do it like that. Yeah? <laughs> and then, yeah, and do it slowly so the camera can see, because it's nice. There. Lovely. So that is a fabulous Lockwood leaf. And um, what you could do with it now, so obviously this is still soft, this clay, but imagine if you left that in the sun, actually today, because it's sunny weather, it wouldn't take that long for it to dry to leather hard. And leather hard is where it's, you can still bend it, 
but it doesn't crack, it's that in-between stage. And leather hard is amazing to work with because you can do really fabulous cut marks. Um, you see, when, when I cut like this, it, it's quite clean, but it's very easy to mess up the edges. When it's leather hard, it cuts a beautiful clean line. Um, and I'm just getting rid of a bit of that, just making it nice. So with this, I mean, this is quite big, but you could make a lovely wall plaque out of that. Just as it is, to be honest, um, you wouldn't need to do much more and decorate it and paint it. But you could, if you wanted to, Macy, you, I need to get you to come round again because I think you'll be good at this. I'd like you to write your name in the middle. So it's as if it's gonna go, <laughs> as if it's gonna go on your bedroom door. Now, in order to do this, you might want, do you want to do it freehand with the pin tool or do you want to press in if I cut a bit of that and you press it in and then you'd have very straight letters? I don't, I don't mind. Well, try it with, try it with the pin tool. Um, let's see what else we've got here. So we've got these as some pottery tools. You can, like, anything that's got a nice end. Be careful with pins, again, safety with little fingers. But anything, I don't know, you might, your dad might have some tools in the garage or... Um, something in the kitchen um, that you can use. So you, I'll let you decide, you have a go. So think about, so you, for you children doing this, first of all I'd recommend you write your name down on a piece of paper with pencil. So you've got um, an idea of how many letters are in your name and the spacing because then if you cut the, the bit of writing on the paper out with just a little border, then you can place it on and decide where it's gonna sit in the clay first. So you've got a rough idea where your letters are gonna go. So Macy's gonna do it freehand, because she's really clever and she knows how many letters are in your name, don't you? How many letters are in your name? Four. Four. So, <laughs> so she's gonna put her name in the middle and we're gonna see how she does it. Precious on you. Whatever size you want. Imagine this is going on your bedroom door. Good. She wants to go nice, big and bold. Now, Macy actually is very good at writing. Her school handwriting has always been very neat. Yeah, very confident. Now, what you'll all notice while Macy's doing this is that as she's pressing in the clay, there's kind of scraggy bits coming up, and that's completely normal with the clay because the clay actually has bits of sand in it, so when you make a line, it will have scraggy bits. So don't try and neaten that up at this stage. Um, the best thing to do with clay, and probably the Play-Doh, Play um, is to leave it to dry a bit, and then you can actually um, get those off with your finger. What I would do is dry this in the sun, and then I would imagine it's dry, and then I would go down these lines. It does it a little bit when it's wet like this, but not as well, because I'd actually kind of crumb off some of those little rough edges, and then I'd go over with a wet brush and neaten up those lines. But you can see, I hope that's given you a good idea, I'll try and turn it around for the camera so you can see better, that what you can actually do for wall plat. Now Macy, what else would you, if you're gonna hang that on your door, what else would you need on there? Does anyone know? I have a thingy, a doorknob. <laughs> a doorknob? Well, how are you going to hang it on the door? A hook. Yeah, well, but what do you need if you're going to put a hook on a it? Hole. A hole. We need two holes. <laughs> so, I'm, I've got this really good tool here, which is a ceramic tool, um, but basically you can use a knife again to make a hole. So if I do one, do you want to do the other side? So again, think about where you're going to hang it, because if you've got a long piece like this, if you put a hole at the top in the middle, there's a likelihood it's going to be wonky when you hang it because of the weight distribution. I would suggest that you put a hole either side and then someone who's good at DIY, DIY can put um, two nails in your door and then you can um, make sure that it's straight. Um, so, I'm going to put this in about here. You don't want to put it in too near the edge. Um, I mean, this is quite far in, but I just chose to put it there. So I wouldn't put it right near the edge because then the clay can, can break. Um, do you want to do the other side? So somewhere in kind of equal distance, wherever you think. Just press it in and then twist it. Yeah, that's it. And again, we've got a few little scraggy bits come up. 
if you press it in further, it makes a, this tool, it makes a, a bigger hole. Um, and the clay is in there and you can get it out, so it's quite a clever tool. You can get the scraggy bits off. Um, and then obviously imagine that was dry, clean up the scraggy bits and nice and hopefully it would stay nice and flat in the kiln. And then you've got a really nice wall plaque um, or door plaque and you can paint it again with acrylic paint and varnish. Um, so voila! So you could have that on your door, couldn't you know? <laughs> so I hope that's been interesting for you to watch. Um, I think we've covered most things. We've done a bit of jewellery, we've done some coasters, we've done a door plaque, we've done a trinket dish. So this is the trinket dish here. Um, it gives you hopefully ideas and I hope you've produced some things going along with us that you're pleased of. Um, I'd love to see pictures, so if you have produced anything, <clears throat> do pop a do pop a, po a picture on Facebook. So I think your mums or dads hopefully um, can like my page, Sonia Ceramic Art, and then you could um, comment on this video, pop a picture of what you've made. I'd love to see them. And uh, let me know how you got on. If you've got any questions, I'm really happy to answer the questions. I will be reposting this video so you can watch it any time and I may do a video edit as well with some tips and hints and I'll repost that at some point next week as well, maybe on Sunday, see how much time I have. Um, so yeah, please do put pictures on, comment, like my page um, and I really hope you enjoyed the session. It was really fun to do it with you and yeah, be creative. Take care.